Hello everyone, welcome to Diagnostics by Rick. Today we will be doing a 10 minute diagnostic on a 2008 Nissan Altima 2.5 liter. It has symptoms that range from a crank no start to a difficult to start and it spits and sputters or if it does manage to start, it will stall within a few seconds of running. So let's connect the scan tool and get started. One thing that mobile techs have to deal with is not knowing whether or not a trouble code is a real problem or if it was created by a previous tech working on the vehicle. Not that he did anything wrong, but just disconnecting and reconnecting things while testing and then not clearing the codes. Even when I worked in a real shop, this would occasionally come up, but as a mobile tech, there was pretty much always been someone trying to diagnose the problem before I arrived. So for that reason, I will keep these codes in mind but I don't know if they deserve any credibility yet. Given that there are no codes in the ECM, I have to go straight to data to try to get some clues. So at first I don't put very many PIDs up here because I just want the basics. When I first arrived it wasn't even attempting to start. It would crank over, but that was it. So I'd not even seen it spit or sputter at this point. So really all I have is just RPM. Uh, I put mass at air in there just for giggles. I want to make sure the fuel pump's turning on. Take a look at battery voltage. Not super happy with it dropping all the way down to 9.8 volts, but I don't think this is enough to make it not start. And of course we have the start signal. So let's hit play on this. And you see as soon as I hit start, the fuel pump turns on and we get a decent RPM somewhere where it's around two or 300. And then we get a sudden surge. And let me pause it right there. Let's back up. 650 RPM. That's actually because it actually tried to start. That was the first time I had seen it sputter. It made a brief attempt for a moment as the engine sped up while cranking. But that was it. It didn't do it again after that. Well, no real direction there. The vehicle mostly just cranks and doesn't start but it will sometimes either start for a few seconds or spit and sputter and try to start. Knowing this, I probably have spark, but I want to go ahead and verify before moving on to fuel pressure because it can be difficult to connect a fuel pressure gauge to this vehicle. Since everything is easy to get to, I'll go ahead and kill a few birds with one stone. In cylinder to verify valve timing and make sure there's no major exhaust back pressure and sync it with ignition to see where spark is occurring and is it consistent? You may have already noticed an issue. There's a problem with the starter that is adding difficulty to my diagnostic. While cranking, the starter will occasionally break away from the flex plate, making a horrible screech noise before it re-engages. That is what is happening in the weird compression in the middle there. You may also notice that we missed two spark events after the starter momentarily disengaged. This is because the ECM gets lost when this happens and it has to resync before it'll start firing the coils again. When the starter works correctly, no spark events are missing. Here's another time with the starter disengaged for a very brief moment and then caught again before the system lost sync. That is why there is a large gap in the middle. The engine speed slowed down when the starter let go for a fraction of a second. If I zoom in, you can see that the coils are being triggered pretty close to TDC. So compression is good, there's no back pressure, valve timing looks good, and the coils are being triggered pretty close to TDC. Right about now, I just happened to look over and I noticed the spark plug I'd taken out to get the in-cylinder capture was cracked. This is not just a mark, it's cracked enough for me to feel it. Cracked spark plugs seem to travel in packs. I think that's often because the box of plugs gets dropped somewhere along its journey, either to or from the parts store. I pulled out the next plug, and it was also cracked. Do we really have four cracked spark plugs, and that's all that's wrong with this car? Well, the third plug is not just cracked, it's straight up broken. There were no broken pieces of ceramic down inside spark plug well either, so it was probably like this when it was put in. Talk about not paying attention. I asked the shop if they had any plugs, and he had four brand new ones sitting inside on the shelf. I put those in, and no change. 
I'm thinking I might need to go after fuel at this point, but I actually only verified that the coils were being triggered. I never actually put a spark tester on it. I do have spark after doing this, but it's very erratic. And it's not from the starter issue. The spark is erratic even when the triggering is good and the starter's working fine. So I need to put more test leads at the coils and see what is going on. I connect to power supply, ground, trigger, and I put a low amp probe around the power feed. Before we look at the other channels, let's just look at current from the low amp probe. Well, that's not right. There's one coil ramp up around 9 amps, but the rest are closer to 1 or 2 amps. Even the one that is correct amperage doesn't break correctly. It drops down to about 2 amps for a moment before it turns off. I would be surprised if this created any spark at all, and if it did, it was probably very weak. Here's another single ignition event where the current is all over the place. Here's a capture when it actually ran for a few seconds, but you can see that the current is not stable. Just to show you the engine is indeed running here, I set up the cursors to show RPM. Since I am measuring 720 degrees and not 360, you have to double the RPM calculation, so it's actually closer to 2000 RPM. But it didn't stay there long before it stalled. Experienced scope users probably already know what is going on, so I will bring the other channels down so you can see them all. Blue is battery voltage, red is coil ground, green is trigger from the PCM, and of course gold is amperage. Every time the coil charges up, the ground circuit will raise off ground up to about 4 volts. It doesn't only happen when the coil we are connected to charges, but it happens when any of the four coils begin to charge. It's because they all have the same ground. A quick check of the wiring diagram shows the coils are grounded at F15. F15 is located right on top of the engine on the aluminum bracket. Couple of grounds loose right here. These are what feed the ignition coils. After I tighten the grounds, the car cranks and it runs every time without stalling. I want to zoom in here for newer scope users to show you something. You can still see the ground pulls up a little bit every time a coil charges, and this power supply pulls down a little bit. This is actually normal. Coils pull around 10 amps, so a small volt drop is normal every time one charges up. On this capture, there's about a 0.7 volt drop, and maybe that's a little high, but when I took this capture, I'd only tighten the two ground bolts with my fingers, so chances are it will get a little better when properly cleaned and tightened, but some volt drop will always remain regardless of how good the ground is. Well, that brings this 10-minute diagnostic to a close. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe button to help me out with YouTube's analytics. If you want to help support this channel, you can do so through Patreon. I'll put a link in the description below along with a link to the Pico files from this car for my patrons to download. Thanks everyone, and have a good day.